Two big-time TCU Horn Frogs are in the transfer portal. Could the Longhorns land one or both? We discuss in today's video. What's up, guys? BK Brad Kellner. Today is Thursday, February 17th, 20 and 22. We're talking Texas football in today's video. More specifically, we're talking about the transfer portal in today's video. Uh, apologies from the jump for my voice. I'm coming off of something, so... Uh, I sound a little different than normal. Maybe to some of you, I sound better, but uh, apologies in advance for the way that I sound. If you don't like it, if you do like it, well, apologies that I don't sound like this more often. But uh, appreciate you guys watching. Please like this video. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done that yet. We talk all things Texas Longhorns, football, basketball, baseball, whatever on this channel. So if you're a UT fan, please subscribe and tap that notification bell so you're always informed whenever I release new content. So two big time TCU Horn Frogs are in the transfer portal. Oshawn Mathis has been in the portal for a while. He entered it back on January 12th. So we've got some developments on his recruitment we'll get to in a second. The other TCU Horn Frog who is now in the portal is Kari Coleman, a freshman All-American from 2020. Didn't have a great sophomore year in 2021, but still a guy who's been pretty productive through his first two years of college football and a guy that I think Texas would very much like to have. So why did these two guys enter the portal? Well, a coaching change. That's obvious. Gary Patterson no longer in Fort Worth. Gary Patterson is in Austin. And that's why the Longhorns appear to be in the mix for both of these guys. Of course, Gary Patterson hired by UT a couple of weeks ago as a special assistant to Steve Sarkeesian. So I think that's going to pay off because of Patterson's coaching acumen, because of the defensive mastermind that he's been in college football for years. It will pay off even more if the Longhorns are able, are able to land one or both of these players who were formerly coached by GP in Fort Worth. So obviously coaching changes lead to roster attrition. Sonny Dykes in to TCU to replace Gary Patterson, and they've got a new defensive scheme. So the new defensive coordinator for TCU is a guy by the name of Joe Gillespie. He's coming in from Tulsa. He runs a 3-3-5 defense. Well, if you know Gary Patterson, you know Gary Patterson is known for a 4-2-5 defense that he ran successfully in Fort Worth for decades. Uh, different defensive look, different defensive scheme for TCU. And those two players, O'Shawn Mathis and Kari Coleman, were defensive ends in GP's 4-2-5 system. In this new 3-3-5 look, they would be outside linebackers. So a different system, their roles would be different. And oh, they decided to enter the portal. Once again, Mathis entered the portal back on January 12th. Uh, Coleman entered the portal this Tuesday, so a couple of days ago on February 15th. And yeah, Gary Patterson to Texas makes Texas a prime fit for both of these guys. So let's talk about these two players individually, and then we'll talk big picture what their additions could mean for Pete Kwiatkowski and the Longhorn defense. O'Shawn Mathis is the better of the two players, no question. If you had to pick one of these two guys, you're taking Mathis without hesitation. Uh, if you're a Big 12 football fan, you know about O'Shawn Mathis, man. He's super productive. He's been around for a number of years. Uh, in three seasons in Fort Worth, he's got 133 tackles, 26 TFLs, and 12 and a half sacks. Pretty good production from a defensive end. He had nine sacks in 2020, had just four last year, but still pretty productive, still pretty disruptive as a defensive end for TCU. And look, Texas needs help. From a pass rushing standpoint, the Longhorns leader in sacks last year had 2.5. That was Ben Davis. In a down year for O'Shawn Mathis, he had four sacks. Once again, in 2020, he had nine sacks. The leader for the Longhorns this past season had just two and a half sacks. So if Mathis puts pen to paper and comes to UT, he's a day one starter and he's your best edge player right away. Right away, the dude's a stud, 6'5", close to 260. Once again, he's been productive, high motor, disruptive. The proof is there. The proof is in the pudding. He's a GP special, not a super highly touted recruit coming out of high school, but a guy who performed better than his stars. And we've seen that from TCU for a number of years. He's also from Central Texas, too. So obviously the Gary Patterson connection makes Texas a favorite for O'Shawn Mathis. But he played his high school ball at Maynard High School in the Central Texas area, not too far away from the campus of the University of Texas. So there's a natural close to home fit, a geographical fit for O'Shawn Mathis as well. The Longhorns have been one of the favorites from day one, but I texted one of my sources earlier today, and he feels pretty confident that O'Shawn Mathis will be coming to Texas when it's all said and done. Uh, my source did mention that Alabama and Clemson have offered 
USC has also been in consideration as well. So anytime you get those schools showing interest, obviously the player is going to show some interest as well. And you've got to fend off some blue blood type of programs to get that done. Uh, Alabama and Clemson, we know how good they've been in college football over the years. USC, a blue blood. They just hire Lincoln Riley. They're recruiting like crazy. Uh, some tough competitors that the Longhorns are going to have to fend off, but I still feel pretty good about Mathis eventually coming to Texas. And most of the people that I've talked to feel pretty good about that happening as well. So would love that. Once again, if Mathis comes to the 40 acres, he is a starter from day one, and he immediately becomes one of, if not the best defensive players on Texas. And the Longhorns need a lot of defensive help, guys. That goes without saying. I'll read some of the numbers. Uh, if you want to turn off your volume for a little bit, I wouldn't blame you because they are ugly. Last year, Texas ranked 99th in the country in scoring defense, 100th in total defense. They were also 101st in sacks Last year, I mentioned the team leader only had two and a half. Texas, as a team, only had 20 sacks this past season. So they need help up front in a big way. Uh, O'Shawn Mathis will provide that. Feel free to turn the sound back on. Although, if you turn your sound off, you can't hear what I'm saying right now. So Mathis would be great uh, for Texas. That probably goes without saying. Once again, if you're a Big 12 fan, if you're a college football fan, you know the name. You know how good he's been. It'd be a big-time addition for Pete Kwiatkowski and this Texas defense. So now to Kari Coleman who entered the portal on Tuesday, once again, a couple of days ago, from New Orleans, uh, a three-star player, another Gary Patterson special, guys. Three-star recruit, was committed to Kansas at one point before he flipped and ultimately ended up at TCU. He was a freshman All-American in 2020. How about these numbers? For a true freshman in a COVID year, all right, think about the lack of off-season that we had in college football. No spring ball for most teams in 2020. Kari Coleman came in and made an immediate impact right away as a true freshman. 33 tackles, 15 TFLs that ranked seventh in the country. Not for freshmen in the country, for everybody. 15 TFLs for Kari Coleman in 2020. Also had three sacks and only nine starts. The dude hit the ground running in Fort Worth. He was a beast from day one. Uh, last year, not as good. Kari Coleman dealt with an injury. He missed the first three games of the season, and he just wasn't the same player after that. Only 19 tackles, only two and a half TFL. So he went from 15 to two and a half from freshman year to sophomore year, and uh, just one and a half sacks from Kari Coleman last season. So look, TCU as a team, as a defense, underachieved last year. Mathis's numbers weren't as good. Coleman's numbers weren't as good. Most of the players on TCU, I mean, their overall defensive numbers were not nearly as good in 2021. That's a Big part of the reason why they moved on from Gary Patterson and made a change there. Uh, they just didn't have it on defense. They didn't have it really as a team in 2021. TCU was expected to be a dark horse contender in the Big 12 last season. Uh, that obviously did not happen. So Kari Coleman, though, high motor, got some speed, good change of direction. He's been disruptive. Once again, the production was there in 2020. His number is not horrible last year, but obviously not a great encore performance from Kari Coleman after what he did as a freshman uh, once again, I'd rather O'Shawn Mathis. I think everybody would, but I wouldn't mind Kari Coleman at all. He's got more eligibility than Mathis does. He's a younger player. And uh, once again, I think he's a guy who would be a rotational piece for Texas right away. He was a defensive end in the old TCU system. But now that the Horny Toads are moving to that 3-3-5 look, they were asking Coleman to shift the outside linebacker. Sounds like he gave it a try. Like based on the timing of him entering the portal, you know, he went through some winter workouts and off-season conditioning in Fort Worth. I guess he just didn't vibe with the coaches, didn't feel like his skill set would work in the new defense there. So he uh, decides to put his name in the portal as well. Uh, Ole Miss is definitely a contender. I've seen a lot of Kari Coleman to Ole Miss smoke over the last couple of days. Of course, Ole Miss landed Zach Evans, the former five-star from Texas who started his career at TCU, the running back. He transferred to Ole Miss a couple of weeks ago, and there's that relationship between Evans and Coleman. Ole Miss, look, Lane Kiffin did a phenomenal job last year. He's doing a phenomenal job in Oxford. They've crushed it in the transfer portal. They've been doing great in the recruiting front altogether. So they are in the mix for Kari Coleman as well. But because Gary Patterson is in Austin, uh, the Longhorns have been linked to Coleman pretty much since the moment he put his name in the portal. So it feels like we're still a, a while away from a Kari Coleman decision. I'll do some more digging on that. Uh, the source that I talked to earlier today said he doesn't know where Coleman's going to end up. But uh, we'll see. If Texas can land one or both of Mathis and Coleman, 
be massive additions to a Texas defense that needs a lot of help. Of course, the Longhorns have crushed it in the transfer portal offensively with Quinn Ewers, with Isaiah Nayer, with Jaleel Billingsley. The Longhorns did add Ryan Watts at corner from Ohio State, so they did have one good impact defensive transfer in this offseason to this point. But uh, they missed out on Drew Sanders. They missed out on Jared Verse. Being able to get one or both of these TCU transfers would be massive for Pete Kwiatkowski because there's not a ton – of proven talent on this Texas defense right now. If you're able to bring in some dudes who already have some starting experience under their belt, uh, that'd be big time for Sark, PK, and the Texas Longhorns. So there you go. O'Shawn Mathis in the portal. He's been there for a while. Still feel good about him ending up on the 40 acres. And now you've got Kari Coleman in the mix as well. And because Gary Patterson is in Austin, you feel like Texas has a chance to land him as well. Comment below with your thoughts. What do you guys think? Do you want Mathis? Do you want Coleman? Do you want both? If you had to pick one, who would you choose? Always love hearing from you guys. You guys are the reason why I make these videos. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. Please like this video if you haven't yet. Give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to this channel as well. Getting close to 2K subscribers. So subscribe if you can and uh, please spread the word. I really do appreciate y'all's continued love and support. All right, that's going to do it for today's video. Quick shout out to the video sponsor, Last Stand Hats. The discount code has been scrolling across the bottom of your screen throughout the duration of the video. Use code BK10 at checkout. You'll get 10% off your purchase from laststandhats.com. Next video will be Texas basketball related, previewing this Saturday's tilt between the Longhorns and Texas Tech. The Horns looking for revenge after what went down in Lubbock a couple of weeks ago. So definitely stay tuned for that. All right, guys, appreciate the love. Until next time, y'all stay safe, y'all stay healthy, and hook them.